Don't let YouTube decide what information you get. That's your choice. YouTube is deleting our videos and cuts you off from a source of honest reporting. Make sure you don't lose access to NTD's news content and take a quick moment to subscribe to our newsletter so no matter what happens here, you'll keep your access to a trustworthy news source. How many American weapons have fallen to the hands of the Taliban? With Afghan security forces collapsing, the militant group now has access to more Black Hawk helicopters than most countries in the world. Top House Republicans reveal that the Taliban now have access to over $85 billion worth of U.S. military equipment in Afghanistan. The figures are based on the amount the U.S. provided to the Afghan forces while training and assisting them and on what U.S. troops left behind. That includes 75,000 vehicles, over 200 airplanes and helicopters, over 600,000 small arms and light weapons. The Taliban now has more Black Hawk helicopters than 85 percent of the countries in the world. Congressman Jim Banks goes on to say that the Taliban don't have just weapons. They also have high-end American technologies like night vision goggles, body armor and security devices is that the Taliban now has biometric devices which have the fingerprints, eye scans, and the biographical information of the Afghans who helped us over the last 20 years. And Republicans learned from the briefing that the Biden administration has no plan to account for or recover the weapons. Banks says Republicans will fight for a plan to account for the weapons when they go through the National Defense Authorization Act markup next week. But he's not concerned just about the Taliban. It's that we know that al-Qaeda and ISIS-K still exist and are growing in Afghanistan, and eventually they acquire these weapons. Congressman Jake Elzey dismisses the claim that the Taliban won't be able to fly the Black Hawk helicopters. He also points out it's not just terrorist groups that can potentially access these weapons. We have enemies and adversaries throughout the world, such as China, Russia, and Iran, who are more than capable of either buying those and flying them again, or outright stealing them. Keep in mind that China and Russia have aircraft that look remarkably similar to our Generation 5 F-22 and F-35, and there's a good reason for that. Either they copied them or they stole them outright. House Republicans are calling on President Biden to extend the August 31st deadline and stay in Afghanistan until every American is safely evacuated. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy says it's clear from the congressional briefing that it's impossible to bring every American home by that deadline. He also says the U.S. should not have to follow instructions from the Taliban on what to do. Mississippi is dealing with one of the worst CCP virus surges it's had so far. Recently, the state's renewed an order saying Mississippians should isolate if they test positive. Those who don't could be fined or even isolated behind bars. NTD's Miguel Moreno has that story. Mississippi has renewed a severe isolation order. If you test positive for COVID-19, you need to isolate. If you don't, expect a fine or jail time. This is not a new order. This is an order that we released back in 2020. This was a reissue of the same order that's been out there to remind individuals of the um, seriousness of COVID and that if you are infected, the best way to limit transmission is to isolate yourself, is to keep yourself away from, from other individuals. The order says COVID-19 positive Mississippians need to isolate for 10 days. This includes K-12 through students who must be excluded from class to isolate. Violators face up to $5,000 fines, five years in jail, or both. We don't know how many people have already violated this order and others like it. Neither the governor's office nor the attorney general have gotten back to us. Now there will be exceptions. And certainly there can be exceptions for seeking treatment. And, and you know, that's, that's part of the process. Mississippi's undergoing another surge, one of the worst surges yet. The highest daily positive cases and hospitalizations with COVID-19 they've reported in the pandemic. And the vast majority of people testing positive, being hospitalized and dying are not vaccinated or partially vaccinated. Miguel Moreno, NTD News. And the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, is retaliating against a Malaysian singer after he posted online mocking the regime's authoritarian rule and comparing it to the Taliban. 
A social media post titled "Eight Tips for the Taliban" made a splash in China last week. The post's author, a Malaysian singer, appears to be comparing the Chinese regime's totalitarian rule to that of the Taliban. But it didn't take too long for Chinese authorities to take notice. They quickly suspended his account on Weibo, a popular Chinese social media platform. The post ironically proposes what the Taliban must do to hold on to power in Afghanistan. But the steps outlined exactly match Beijing's tactics for maintaining control. The post first suggests that the Taliban block foreign websites like Facebook, YouTube, and Google. Then it advises setting up Taliban-run news websites and social media apps. That's so citizens will only have access to news produced by the Taliban, with no outside information or influence. The post also ironically proposes establishing concentration camps and black jails. These suggestions echo many of the Chinese regime's strategies that have been in play for years, from its internet censorship firewall to its persecution of prisoners of conscience to its suppression of ethnic minorities in China's northwestern Xinjiang region. But the post doesn't stop there. Next, it says the Taliban should create a giant statue of its leader and place it at the gates of the presidential palace. That, on top of putting up slogans in the streets and brainwashing students through their schools, during China's Cultural Revolution in the 1960s, authorities came up with an endless stream of propaganda slogans. At the same time, China also saw a nationwide trend of building statues idolizing former communist leader Mao Zedong. What's more, the post advises the Taliban to urge citizens to attack criticism of authorities online, a prospect that bears a striking resemblance to China's so-called 50 Cent Army, a group of state-backed internet users paid to praise Beijing and its policies online while attacking anyone who questioned or criticized the regime. What more does the Taliban need to do? According to the post, it should pay foreigners to sing patriotic songs about Afghanistan and make patriotic movies. While in China, two films called Wolf Warrior II and Operation Red Sea swept the country's box office in recent years and received massive attention on social media. And there are many questions surrounding the Afghan military and why it fell so quickly to the Taliban. NTD's Jason Perry found out more behind the sudden collapse in an exclusive interview with a Navy reservist and veteran of the war in Afghanistan. Petty officer Michael Castleberry said he saw no obvious signs that the Afghan military would give in to the Taliban. To fight along with us, because、uh, there's a couple of times where、uh, we got in、uh, ticks with just troops in, con in contact,、um, where we would fight along next to the、uh, the Afghan army, and they they seemed like they were they were actually you know ready to go, and you know they seemed like they had a Uh, uh, a reason to fight. One of the interpreters Castleberry worked with in Afghanistan immigrated to the United States in 2014. That interpreter visited Castleberry recently and gave him some news of why the Taliban was able to take over so quickly. He came by and we were just talking about it, and he actually said that、um, he talked to his cousin, which is also who's still back in Afghanistan in Ghazni. And his cousin said、uh, the soldiers, the troops there, were told, "Do not fight." You know, they, they they were told by, and I was like, "Are you serious?" And he's like, "Yeah." I said, "Well, it's kind of funny because you don't hear that、uh, on the news. You don't, you know, that the the their leadership told them do not、uh, fight against the Taliban. That's why you don't see any, you know, you didn't see any troops or anybody. That's why it." It was so fast for them to overtake a lot of those、uh, districts. Castleberry was watching the news with his father recently when he saw a scene of forward operating base Ganzi in Afghanistan. He was once deployed there, where the American and Polish flags used to be raised up, now had Taliban flags flying overhead. The Navy reservist was hurt to see that, and he said it felt like a kick to the stomach. He said it's hard not to feel like those who died died for nothing, but he has a message for troops who are taking it pretty hard. Confide in each other, you know, because right now that's all we have is each other, you know. And、uh, I tell you, the closest、uh, family that I've had in a long time were those guys that I served with over there, and、uh, we went through a lot. You know, luckily, thank God, we didn't lose anybody、um, while we were out there.、Um, un unfortunately, we did have one that uh, uh, committed uh, that, you know. Committed suicide when they got back home, but you know, 
uh, you know, and a lot of that is still, you know, it sticks with you. You know, and it's, it's you know, to just find something that you could do to, you know, to take your mind off of it. Yeah, I, I tell people, hey, just stay away from the news. <laughs> According to a study done by Boston University, about four times as many troops have died by suicide than in actual combat in post 9-11 war operations. Jason Perry, NTD News. On the Normandy beaches in France, the World War II bunkers are slowly disappearing with the passage of time. Some are removed by local officials, some are half buried in the sand. One bunker had a different fate, though. A local man decided to restore it and turn it into an Airbnb rental. Let's take a look. It's impossible to miss these bunkers when walking along the Normandy beaches. Every hundred yards, these concrete shelters are one of the only physical remains left of what happened here 76 years ago. On the morning of June 6, 1944, 156,000 troops landed in Normandy, including 78,000 American soldiers. As time passes, some of the bunkers have become eroded or half buried in the sand, like this one that once operated as a radar station to detect planes. But one bunker seems to have found a new life. Bonjour, bienvenue au bunker. Step by step, Serge Collieu, a bunker enthusiast, bought up a plot of land in the area and spent 18 months digging out and renovating the 4,300 square foot bunker. It mostly was difficult for the craftsmen. The digger especially had a lot of work, the electrician as well. Otherwise, we did everything ourselves. The bunker has been turned into a fully functioning rental, complete with a bar area and cozy living room. It's now a home away from home for French visitors and foreigners, including Germans. We adapted the bunker while preserving a certain feel. We wanted to give the building a second life. So we are not going to live in the past forever. The site, now in a residential area and surrounded by houses and gardens, close to the coast, was once operated by 30 men in the German Air Force, or Luftwaffe. While some local mayors have advocated to remove the bunkers, as they can occasionally pose a danger to bathers, some guests and residents want to preserve them. It is a moment of our history, of the history of humanity, and it is a bit sad to want to destroy all this. On the contrary, it holds memories. Our grandparents have lived through this. My parents did too. Nuts to the war are present throughout the space, with memorabilia like helmets and reproductions of guns. Although Colliu said he did not want to go overboard to allow guests to enjoy it for parties too. According to an author and specialist, though some Normandy bunkers are to disappear with time, there is an ongoing trend to preserve them and have their history remembered. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Don't forget to catch all of our programs on TV. NTD Evening News is on every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Find your local NTD channel at ntd.com TV.